How's it going, everybody? We're getting wild on a Friday night. I am Logan Myers, and that is my man. Mark Grayson. Hey, Mark. Hey, I'm uh, Logan Myers here. How you doing? Actually, it's me, Mark Hamill. I have a question for you. Who's your papa? Who's your father? Omni-Man, otherwise known as Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to be back talking with you. I've done this a few times this week, having a blast talking TV and movies. And tonight we're going to be talking about the new series that premiered on Amazon Prime Video, Invincible. Uh, based off Invincible! The image, Invincible! We have the Robert Kirkman and Corey Walker comics that came out earlier. Who's that? Who's Robert Kirkman? We've never heard of that guy before. Yeah, he, he wrote the, the Living Dead series, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Something like that. Apparently the he's walk, rich. The Walking Dead, he's probably worth like a billion dollars at this point. Um, yeah. But this is his other side of the spectrum when it comes to comics. Nothing like, you know, zombies. This is a superhero comic and uh, really great. And the way I look at it, it's like an animated The Boys, you know, very gruesome, bloody, good time. This was an amazing series, animated series. Um, I had no background knowledge of it. I didn't read the comics. I'm not a comic guy myself. I love all the movies and TV shows that come out of comics. So not knowing the story going in, I didn't know what to expect. I was expecting a cartoon superhero show, but I didn't know anything about the story, where it was going to go. Um, and this first the first episode that introduces us to Mark, we know that he's this high schooler who's in high school and he happens to have a father that's a superhero, uh, Omni-Man, who's basically like your Superman or Homelander. He's the he's your main superhero um, and he, he goes by Omni-Man and it's played by J.K. Simmons. Uh, so their relationship sets the tone for the series here. It's This is what Invincible is about. It's about Mark, Mark Grayson and his father. Omni Man there. So Mark is trying to discover his own his own superpowers. He's trying to come into his own. He hasn't got any of them yet. Like I said, he's a high schooler, so he's he's you know he's wondering when they're going to come. And in this first episode, we see the superpowers him him finally discover that he has these superpower superpowers just like his father. The way you can describe it, it's much like Spider Man and Superman. You know, I have like a Peter Parker character being Mark Grayson going. You know, he's in high school yeah. finding Felt out he a lot like that. Yeah, he has superpowers, much like Peter Parker's Spider Man going through, you know, puberty, going through the high school drama, girls, and things like that, and also becoming a superhero and finding out he had these powers and also having this relationship with his Superman like father, Omni Man, which is a really great superhero, but he has a dark side to him as, as we find out in the series. Um, but that's the best way to describe it. And it's really interesting. It's like an R-rated version of these characters. Absolutely. Yeah, it is like an R-rated version of the characters that we already know. It's There's a lot of characters on this show, other superheroes, that are reminiscent of the Justice League. And I think a lot of what Robert Kirkman was doing with the comic book and this series is he was, he was obviously paying homage to what he knows and loves, all our characters from Marvel and DC, of course, and all the other uh, comic book characters that we know and love and superheroes. Um, and he was gonna he was gonna make his own. The first half or so of the show, it seems very familiar. You know, we have this other team of superheroes um, called the Guardians, um, who are a lot like the Marvel superheroes. You know, there's there's a lot of the same similarities. Each of them had their own special powers, but it uh, has a little twist, of course. And there, I'd say it's a more it's a more comedic tone. There's some comedy sprinkled throughout. Um, I know one of the characters uh, in the Guardians <laughs> is played by Jason Manzukas, who we know from <laughs> who we know from the league. So he's just like really over the top, and you can spot his voice right away. He plays yeah. a character Rex Um <laughs> So there's a lot of characters that are very similar to what we've seen before uh, in D in DC. It felt more like DC, like Justice League ish to me. It did. It did more compared to like Avengers, just the characters, yeah. they're all different personalities and they had a really great uh, ensemble of voice actors, a lot of comedians and people were familiar with uh, one of my favorites showing up at the end is Seth Rogen. He just, he has a distinct voice, you know, it's him. You know, it's um, him right away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And even Steven Young, he's having a really amazing, remarkable year. Uh, being up for that Oscar, he didn't win, but he was nominated for Minari, I think it's called. And then I still need to watch that. And then him working with Robert Kirkman again, obviously in The Walking Dead, and then voicing this character Mark Grayson. It's really believable. 
it sounds like a teenager. He does. All the voice work on the show is great. Uh, like you mentioned, Stephen Yun there playing Mark Grayson. Uh, J.K. Simmons, I'd say, is perfect as Omni Man. His voice, yeah. like, he has he has that unique voice that that you can spot right away, and that sounds right with a character like Omni Man. You know, he has that he can he can produce that like superhero like commanding voice. I'd say um, I I really like Omni Man's character too, not only from his voice but his look. I like how he kind of looks older. We've never seen like an older looking like superhero before, like throughout a film. You know, like that's how we we're introduced to him. We always see him kind of when they're young. So yeah. it's cool. It's cool in this that the main one, the biggest, the strongest uh, superhero, Omni Man, is uh, an older gentleman who has like you know gray obviously in his beard. He has a mustache and gray in his hair, so he looks older. Um, and eventually in the series, we find out more about Omni-Man and uh, not everything is as it seems like just how they set up the introduction to this story and how it feels very familiar. By the end of the first episode, there's a huge twist that yeah. turns everything upside down and sets the ser sets this whole series in motion and is going to totally subvert everything you were expecting um, based on what you saw for a lot of the first episode and totally changes things at the end. So it makes it a, it makes, brings the mystery to it and it's going to lead it forward till the finale. I would have to think the first few episodes were kind of slow. They're setting everything up, introducing these characters, the relationship between Omni-Man and Mark and his relationships in school. And then it really found its footing like episode three and four and then on, it just got better and better. So it took a little bit to get there, but I really appreciate appreciated what they did because I rem remembered a lot of the comics. I read the first like 40 or 50 issues, um, you know, setting up these characters and what happens. It did a good job. It just took a little bit to find where they wanted to go with the show. And once right. they found that, it was just like, I couldn't stop watching it. I thought the pace was really good. Yeah. I mean, we're being introduced. Uh, most people are being introduced to characters and superheroes that they've never seen before. It's a whole new universe that a lot of people... I'd say most people that have that have watched Invincible haven't seen before. So it's a lot to kind of introduce and get you kind of a feel of what they're trying to do with the show and all the characters. And it's a vast universe. There's a lot of superheroes. There's a lot of supporting characters. There's like people uh, like Walton Goggins character, uh, Cecil, I believe his name is, who's kind of like a shield type character, like a government kind of um, uh, some sort of government agent or maybe off government uh, but has yeah. the feel of like a shield agent, like trying to figure out what's going on with these superheroes and stuff. So, um, yeah, it just has a, a wide cast. There's a big universe to cover. So, yeah, within these first couple episodes, it takes a little bit to to get into it. But yeah, like you mentioned, once it starts, once it starts going, it doesn't let up until the very end, all the way up until that finale, which just blows your mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just kicks it into action. Like everything just like picks up and just so much like gore and decapitation and body parts and blood and they so go gruesome and they, they go, say no kids cartoon that's for sure this is not a kid's cartoon i forgot how dark this goes and it gets there pretty quick never lets yeah. you go and it was one of the best parts of the show another character uh character they introduced that i really enjoyed was damien dark blood he was voiced yes. by clancy, clancy brown. brown clancy brown he looked like um rorschach from the watchmen he had the trench coat and the hat yeah Sort of like a, I'd say a Rorschach mixed with maybe a little Hellboy. That's what he reminded Hellboy. me of. Hellboy yeah. too, right? Yep. His character's cool. It has to do with this like murder mystery kind of thing, situation going on. While you still had the whole superhero bad guys stuff happening around the city as Mark is learning how to become a superhero. You have a lot of these, of these stories, a linear approach to the main story. It's not having to do directly with the main story, but you also get these other stories which provide a lot of, uh, I don't know, it felt more like uh, had to do with what's going on in the world today, kind of these social issues. And there was a lot of social things in with these superheroes too, that kind of tied it into the real world with a lot of what's going on in the world today, like the social issues, obviously with race and cops and, uh, you know, everything like that with a lot of these uh, social issues. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of story here. There's a lot of things to cover. I like how they, they, uh, brought all these characters in and a lot of these voice actors are people that we've seen in uh, Kirkman's past of course you see a lot of you recognize a lot of voices from The Walking Dead along the way and like you mentioned Kirkman just you know he's going to bring the brutality and the violence with The Walking Dead how it started out to what it's like become now and it's still going it's going to end pretty soon but it just gets more and more brutal 
and invincible in animated form is the most brutal thing you'll see it's like it's got crazy kills and it's got exploding people and in the finale it has probably the craziest 20 25 minutes at least at the beginning of like <laughs> brutality terror a uh, million you know i don't know how many people but just innocent life being shed uh it's it's crazy uh, that's what happened when super superpowers go wrong i'll say that we'll we'll keep it yeah. to that that's how it ends up. yeah well i don't want to spoil too much especially the ending how it all basically ends this, the first season and setting up for two more seasons that got renewed it's like blows your mind <laughs> like not yeah. what i expected i went in i guess with more expectations and it really did blow my mind at the end i'm like holy shit you know yeah. waiting waiting to see the next part of this series so really well done really well executed across the board like you were saying lots of social commentary as to what's going on in the world today intertwining it into this world of superheroes and bad guys and it really worked. It works throughout the series. Uh, the first couple episodes take some time to get into it. But yeah, once it gets into the middle and the end, uh, it's great. Felt the pacing was pretty good. Uh, eight episodes, they got everything done with you know a short amount of time. They could have went 10 or 12 even, but they, they wrapped it up with an eight. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a while, I think, until the next season. It, it got picked up for two more, which is awesome news. We know we'll be getting at least two more, so we'll get to see... A, a good chunk of the story and Robert Kirkman, you know, wrote a lot of these comics. There's a ton more material to pull from. And from uh, what I've heard, it just gets uh, crazier uh, from here. You know, we, we follow Mark Grayson into the next step. What happens after the events of what happened uh, throughout the season and, and in the finale. So I can't wait to the next invincible. It took me a few days to get through, uh, through the first few episodes. And then after that, I was hooked on it kept yeah. watching it i you know yep. it's as good as i remember in the comics after reading like 40 50 issues and remembering what happens and trying to get reintroduced to these characters i forgot about eight years ago mm -hmm. uh it really took me back into that world i love it i love the voice actors i love the animation reminds me of a cartoon yeah. from, the, from the 90s like the x-men that's what i was gonna say it felt old school animation feel like, yeah like, it wasn't like anything new yeah it's like it's like what 2d kind of uh cartoon animation uh, yeah. Much like my favorite one growing up, the X Men cartoon. X Men, yeah. And I have to give it up for the music. They had old and new music throughout the show. Really great soundtracks. I'll probably end up downloading it on uh, Spotify. It was that good. I just love the characters. Really great story. Blew my mind. Didn't know what to expect, and they just raised the bar. You know, they raised the bar, and now Amazon has two awesome superhero shows. So they're off and running. Really, I mean, these are two huge successful shows that have uh you know really sparked everybody's imagination and have uh, left them wanting more and more seasons ordered and everything so this is good news for amazon prime i mean they've yeah. been scooping up more and more things they've won a couple oscars there i believe with some of their films so they're on a roll and uh yeah i love the boys obviously and invincible just feels like uh you know it feels kind of like extension of the boys in a way but it's its own thing and I can't wait to see how it grows and what they do in these next couple of seasons because, you know, Amazon's going to invest in, them ton, in a ton. So Kirkman's going to be able to bring everybody back, hopefully. And we'll be seeing a lot more voice work from other people that we know. And, you know, we saw some, we heard some big stars throughout this first season. Uh, John Hamm even had like a small little part there at the beginning with like a very minor character. So you get, you get some big stars here, even doing small little chunks uh also yeah seth rogan like you mentioned too yeah to add to that as well zay zay beats plays amber mm -hmm. the girlfriend we have jillian jacobs plays adam e which is one of the superheroes that kind of likes mark you know has a crush on him ezra miller we had marisha, ezra miller marisha, marisha marisha ali plays uh titan yeah she was that super criminal is all big yeah um, mark hamill is art rosenbaum there's a ton of people. And he's like the Alfred. He's like the Alfred guy that makes the suits for Omni Man. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And even Seth, yeah, Seth Rogen. But yeah, there's a ton of cameos, voice cameos in the show. You just got to pay attention to listen. You can recognize the actor or actress. It's really well done across the board. The showrunners all the way down to the cast and animation, music, everything. Uh, it just makes me want more. Me too, man. I felt the same. It was great all around. I loved it. Robert Kirkman, you're the man. I mean, yep. 
I didn't like the the later Walking Dead stuff, but that's I mean, he, Robert Kirkman's the man for sure. He's came up with two brilliant things that have captured everybody's imagination. He's obviously rich beyond belief. I'm sure he has more. I'm sure he has more intellectual property coming. The guy can write. He knows how to make these shows that are like ultra violent, but also you can you can you know relate to the characters and everything. He writes uh, good characters just, for sure. Yeah, he really he really does. Yeah, him and I think he had a co-writer too on this. I don't know his name, but uh, yeah, definitely props to the writing. I loved how it was structured. Um, from what I read, it's different from the comics. Like he takes a lot from the comics, but he also like this is kind of makes changes to it too. Yeah. And uh, takes some liberties here and there, but mostly stays, sticks to it. Uh, he was on Fat Man Beyond on the podcast I listened to a couple, uh, I think last week, I think he was on. And he mentioned, you know, it just gets, it just gets more wild. The story gets crazier. <laughs> Everything gets more brutal from here. So can't wait for these next uh, couple seasons. And he said, uh, all he can promise is it'll, then season two will premiere in four years or less. So probably more like two at the most, I'd assume. I don't know how I, long it's going to take, but. I would assume it takes a while to make a show like this because you actually have to draw it out with artists on the yeah. filming, like the old school right. way. So it takes yeah. time, like, you know, Pixar cartoons that you have to hand draw takes right. forever so hopefully within the next two years i'd love to see this returning uh definitely a hit for the year of 2021 we're in the may already mm -hmm. definitely one of the better shows out agreed man uh, this was a fun one to review fun one to watch uh went by super fast it felt like uh it did it, yeah it, it went by quickly uh, great binge i'll probably even watch it again just because i think i missed a lot on the first watch i you know i was watching a lot you know, at, yeah. on my phone during breaks at work and stuff like that. So I think if I give it another watch, I can pick up other stuff in the background because there's a lot of story. There's not just the main main story between Mark and Omni Man. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on on the side. So uh, yeah. yeah, I think it'll benefit for a rewatch for sure and yeah. tide me over until the next season comes. Absolutely. I, like I was telling you, I think I would actually buy this. If they put it on 4K or like Steelbook or something take my money because i would definitely buy it and rewatch it again it's that good yeah sure is i agree too i'd love it on my shelf back there yeah added to the cinefels collection the ever-growing collection of movies so that being said we highly recommend the first season of invincible now streaming on amazon prime video with everything we said about the show it's pretty pretty fantastic pretty perfect took a few episodes to really get into it but once they found their footing never let you go really fantastic series um a really great ending um, so I'm going to give the first season of Invincible a four and a half out of five. Mark Grayson hair pieces. <laughs> I'm going to give it a four out of five Omni-Man hair pieces. Parker! <laughs> Mark! Get over here, Mark! <laughs> <laughs> He's always yelling. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe on our YouTube channel right here. We've got plenty of videos. We just posted our review of Star Wars The Bad Batch, Episode 1 review. Me and this guy over here had a great time with that. Brand new Star Wars series on Disney Plus that premiered on Star Wars Day. We also shared our thoughts on the past few Mighty Ducks episode. That's right. And we also just gave away a couple oh, digital right. codes for these couple movies. Yeah, well, I had a great time talking Invincible with you, Uncle Henry. We both love this show. It's always fun catching up and talking about our favorite things, which is entertainment. So it's great to see your beautiful face once again, and I'll see it very soon, hopefully. <laughs> I hope to see you in person soon. We're both fully vaxxed and ready to rock. That's right. Coming up, second dosage of Pfizer, and I'm going to be ready to rock and roll. All right, right, man. Well, this was awesome, dude. I'll see you uh, in the next review. We'll be reviewing some stuff coming up. So until the next one, we're out at Cinefella Studios. Until next time, this is Omni Man and my man over there. Logan Grayson signing out. Till next time. Jeez. Jeez.